On today's live lesson, we're going to be working on four different fingerstyle techniques for the ukulele. Now, I want to preface this. There's a lot more than four different types of fingerstyle. This is just four techniques that I picked that I use pretty routinely in my playing. And I, I tried to get cute with it, where we've got one technique that just uses the thumb, one with the thumb and index, one with the middle finger introduced as well, and one with the four fingers of the thumb, index, middle, and ring. So we're going to break them down one by one. Just so that you can hear the name, so you can kind of ex know what to expect as we're going through. The thumb we're going to call melodic picking. The two fingers is going to be the Hawaiian pick strum technique. Three is going to be Travis picking. And four is going to be Campanella. We're going to break each one of these four techniques down as we go through and give little demonstrations of each. And you'll notice that just because it uses less fingers doesn't mean it's less complicated. And so it's a pretty cool, you know, diverse set of techniques to be able to introduce on your ukulele journey. But let's go ahead and start with the first one, thumb picking. So it's funny because when we think finger style, oftentimes we think many fingers. And finger style is kind of a, a loose term. Some people might say, well, you need to use more than two fingers for it to be considered finger style. And that's, that's okay. In my opinion, finger style is really... Anything that you're doing that doesn't have the pulse of the hand moving down and up. So it's when you're articulating sort of single strings at a time or combinations of strings. And for me, my favorite fingerstyle technique, both for myself as a player and to introduce to new players, is this thumb picking that I call melodic picking. Now, why do I call it that? Well, if I grab my ukulele, if somebody said, hey, Matt, you know, play some chords, I could just use my thumb and play the chords, right? That works fine. That's not really a finger style technique, right? Well, what if they said, hey, play some sort of basic melody or play something like a scale, right? If I move the camera down for a second and I play a scale here, I really like to use my thumb for this, not just because of its efficiency of striking the strings, but because of its opportunity when I'm playing through to be able to play multiple strings at a time. For instance, if I wanna play a C major scale, and I want to finish that C major scale with a full chord, I can do that by using the thumb picking technique. Now I'm gonna show you a specific example that I like to use this technique with, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the technique itself. I like to just use the thumb. You, I use a bit of the nail. If you don't have much nail overhang, that's totally fine. You don't need it. But what I like to do is I like to kind of cup the ukulele. I put my pinky in this sort of divot over here, use the other fingers very lightly, just at the tips of the fingers to kind of grab the uke. My index kind of just hangs out over here. And then I go about a 45 degree angle of the, the thumb to the strings about where the fretboard meets the sound hole. And I can move down or up for different sounds. And so you can kind of experiment. But now as I do this, what you'll notice is that I don't just pluck the strings like this. I actually do something called a rest stroke as I do it. And I'm gonna super zoom in here. A rest stroke is where I strike with a thumb on the first string here, the G string, top string. And you'll see I rest into the C string. Same, same. And then when I come off the A, obviously there's nothing to rest in, but I kind of bring it inward a little bit. See how the thumb kind of looks like it's bouncing over the strings? I can give you this really buttery smooth tone. It gives you really good control and feedback when you're playing a single string. And it can allow you to strum through multiples as well. So bringing the camera back out. So my favorite song to teach with this is a song called The Parting Glass. It's a traditional Irish tune I just adore. Um, and I'm going to play the first part of it. it. sounds something like this. Go ahead and just watch the thumb and see how it'll be striking individual strings and strumming through multiple ones. This technique I call melodic picking, bringing the camera back up, because it really allows me to announce that melody, allows me to pronounce a melody very singularly with the opportunity to kind of put chords and harmony in the background. It's very melodically driven. That's why I call it this. And the reason why it's my favorite technique is because I think it's the one that lets me find my voice the most as a player. And I think that different players that use this technique, they all have a little bit of a different tone. And if you put you know, my five favorite players all in a row and you had them all play with this technique, the same melody, 
I think I could tell them apart because each one has their own sound and voice, just like vocalists all have different sounds and voices. Vocalists sing melody. Our thumb is our melodic picking, and that's really the why with it. Makes for, again, one of my favorite techniques to play on the ukulele and one of the most important ones, both for beginners because it gives you a, a nice simple way to pick with a single finger and for more advanced players to find their tone and their sound as they're going through their ukulele journey. So that's just the thumb. We're calling that melodic picking, right? Now let's look at the next one, two fingers. All right, this is the most difficult technique, in my opinion, we're gonna talk about today. Uh, all of these techniques have their own sets of challenges, right? But I think this one's the hardest, but it's also the coolest. What this t technique is, well, it doesn't really have a name to what I know. In fact, I've talked to a lot of other ukulele players and ukulele players from the islands that just kind of say, no, it's just what you do. They don't really have a name. So for the sake of it, I'm just going to call it the Hawaiian pick strum. And I'm just going to call it that because I'm trying to be as literal as I can be. It's a Hawaiian based technique. Some of the best players in Hawaii all use this. And it's a combination between picking and strumming. So what happens is they're going to use the thumb and index together. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera down. Using the thumb and index, I could just kind of finger pick with these two fingers, but it's kind of inefficient because I'm just using two fingers at a time, right? So what this technique does is it actually takes the concept of strumming, which is more of a pulse, and it uses this without necessarily keeping the pulse. And when I say the pulse, I mean the constant hand up and down, down and up motion. I think that that's what separates this as a finger style technique as opposed to just a strumming technique is you're going to be using your index finger to come up and you can come up over single strings or over combinations of strings. And the thumb can come down, usually just going to be playing the G string, especially if you're playing on a high G ukulele, but it can also kind of hit multiple strings on the down. And so what happens is we get the opportunity to play things like a scale, like that same C major scale I played before like this. If I play it with this technique, I could use just my index and play it with just that one finger. And I could throw in the thumb on the G and play it in between. That's pretty cool, right? So how am I doing this? Well, what I do is I take a very different technique format than I do with other styles of, of finger picking. My thumb is going to be pretty similar to where it was with the thumb style, but a little bit more parallel. My index is gonna go just in front of the thumb because the way that it strikes the string is kind of through this little upward motion. It's, it's less of a, of a pick and more of a strum. It's just a really narrow strum while I'm trying to hit a single string. And so you can kind of practice this, just kind of... See, I'm just kind of strumming that single, single string at a time. And then what I can do is practice strumming a couple at a time and alternating between that and the thumb. So a good exercise, if you've never done this before, is take like your index, do the C string, and then the thumb on the G, and just go back and forth. And then go to the E string, then the A string, then do like the E and A, C and E, right? It's getting the combinations. What's cool about it is the layering effect that's created here rewards being inexact. So if you actually are playing this technique and you accidentally hit a string when you didn't mean to, it actually sounds pretty good. And that's one of the cool things about it. So the mechanics here is cool. We can hear how the C major scale can certainly open up by adding that extra note. But my favorite example with this particular technique um, is from a, an arrangement I did of a song called Kids uh, by MGMT. So if I were to play that with a thumb, just the thumb, it'd be something like, you know, uh, and that's fine, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but I want more activity with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my index to articulate the melody. I'm gonna use the thumb kind of bouncing in the background. It sounds something like this. need isn't it right and it really is right on the edge bringing the camera back up it's right on the edge between 
strumming and picking, isn't it, right? It's, it's, it leans in both. In fact, if I did a four favorite strumming technique video like this, I'd probably throw this one in there too because it really does go right on the edge of both of these sounds. And so that's incorporating that index finger, alternating between the index and thumb. I think it is the most challenging of these techniques that we're gonna talk about today, but it also is kind of the most unique to the ukulele, which definitely makes it pretty cool, right? So that's our two finger technique. We're calling it the Hawaiian pick strum. So we had melodic picking with the thumb, Hawaiian pick strum with these two fingers. Now what we need to work on is something that uses three fingers. In this case, we're gonna introduce the middle finger. So we're doing thumb, index, and middle. And the technique we're going to use with this, I like to call it Travis picking. Now Travis picking was a technique created by Merle Travis for the guitar. And really what Travis picking is, is it's like an illusion, a magic trick. It's trying to be able to play a bass line with your thumb while the melody is played with your other fingers. And so that, that bass line with the thumb is, is quite approachable on a guitar because we have a lot more range on a guitar, a lot more strings. You have three different strings you can use as a bass string on the guitar, right? And on the ukulele, on a high G ukulele, you really have none. I mean, you have your C string, but if you're using the C string as your bass, no, well, I mean, that would be like on a guitar having four strings for a bass. So it's hard to do, but we still can do it. We can still pull this off and take the inspiration of the technique. We can't do like a, I, I would argue we can't do a true Travis picking on a high G ukulele or even a low G ukulele, but we can get really close. And that creates a really cool effect. Same with that, that bass note type of sound. So how do we do this? Well, when we look at Travis picking, we wanna look at the technique first. Our thumb is gonna go on our C string to start right in that 45 degree angle position, right where the fretboard meets the sound hole. And then what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take our index and place it on the E string. Now notice how it's behind the thumb. This is where it's different than our previous technique. We don't want it up in front, we want it squared behind. And then the middle finger here on the A string. You see how these fingers are perpendicular to the strings while the thumb is 45? That'll give you a really good connection. You're more than welcome to use an anchor here. Set the pinky down if you'd like. I personally like to keep the hand floating because of the next technique after this. That can't really do that, but you're more than welcome to do that right now. Try to keep the fingers close to perpendicular to the strings. And when you strike the strings, super zooming in here, don't hook and pull out. Instead, have that first knuckle give some bend and give to it. And I want you to come up and outward so it looks like this. See, I kind of draw the index up underneath the thumb. Same with the middle. See that bend in that first knuckle outward like this? I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. That gives a nice warm, clean tone. So something that you can practice is with the thumb, play the C string, and then you can play the A string with the middle, and then you can play the E string with the index. And then the thumb can go to the G string, play that, and then the same middle on the A and index on the E. This is actually called the three finger roll, and it's kind of a basic Travis picking technique. So this is something that you can just sit and try to get comfortable with. And it should help with what's next of showing some true Travis picking. Now when I say true Travis picking, what I mean is the thumb goes back and forth between the C and the G string to create this kind of bass line. I'm using the air quotes there because again, we can't really play a bass line on an ukulele. But if I do that and then I play melody notes with these two, along with some of the chord stuff, I can play something like this. I'm gonna play a little bit of Waltzing Matilda. Um, and I'm gonna keep the camera super zoomed in here so that you can watch that thumb go back and forth. It should sound and look something like this. Kind of cool, right? That sounds really nice. And when you speed it up, it sounds really neat, doesn't it? Bringing the camera back up. The reason this works so well is because the thumb is consistent. It's always playing the C, then the G, then the C, then the G, then the C. And then the melody of is just happening in conjunction with that. And on the high G ukulele, I start with the C string 
because that's my lower note. I want to start with the lower bass note and then go to the higher bass note for this technique, just in this particular case. Not every time, but in this case. So if you're playing a low G and you want to do this technique, you can start with the G string and then go to the C string, right? And that'll start you with your low note and then go to the high note. It could be a little bit like doing this at first, but that's where working on like a tab that uses this technique can be really helpful. Um, and so this Waltzing Matilda exercise is a good example of one. And if you're watching this as a recording, I'm sure there'll be a link in the description below. And so check, check that out. But that is Travis picking. It's kind of the rotation back and forth with the thumb over these two strings to create this bass type response. And it's a really, really cool technique and sounds really nice on the ukulele. Even though we're pretty steeply adapting it for the instrument compared to a guitar, still has a great tone and vibe. And that thing that we worked on at the start, the three finger roll, that's a great exercise just to build up speed with this kind of three finger picking style. Right? So that is ukulele Travis picking with three fingers, right? So we've done our first finger, the thumb melodic picking. We've done our two fingers, the Hawaiian pick strum. The three fingers, which is going to be kind of a modified Travis picking. And now our four finger, using the ring finger in there too. And we're gonna call this Campanella style. So what does this mean? Well, Campanella is Italian for little bell, I believe. Um, and it's a style of, of playing the ukulele that is reminiscent of playing bells. Now, what does that mean? Well, if, if you've ever watched bells be played, there's a bell for each note. And you'll have like a line of people all playing bells. It's pretty amazing to see. Like, you know, especially during the holidays, there'll be a lot of bell playing and you'll have a row of a whole bunch of people. They each kind of have two notes they're supposed to play, right? Well, what's cool is when this bell is played and then this bell is played and then down the line, two other people play, all of those notes ring into each other at the same time. You get sustain, which is the resonance of that note, all going together to create this really rich, interesting sound, right? So with that in mind on the ukulele, we basically have four bells we can play at a time in that we have our G, C, E, and A strings, our four different strings that can all play a note simultaneously, right? My favorite example of this style is uh, John King uh, has an incredible book that he released in like 2000 or something, it was a while ago, called Classical Ukulele. And one of the pieces on it, I'm gonna bring the camera down, um, is the Bach cello prelude. And uh, I'm not in practice with this, but I'll play a little bit of it. And what you'll notice, all the notes will ring into each other. And so it sounds something like this. Right? Now, as I'm playing this, you'll notice that I'm playing over all four strings to let them all ring into each other, right? Because of that, all four strings are relatively evenly distributed. So if I'm using three fingers, my thumbs can be going on overtime. If I'm using two fingers, I'm going all over the place. I need to be able to play any combination of strings at any given time when I do this technique. So bringing the camera super zoomed in, that means I'm going to station one finger per string so that each string can have an equal representation with my plucking. In this case, the thumb goes to the G, the index to the C, middle to the E, and ring to the A, keeping these fingers closer to perpendicular to the strings. Obviously, my middle index and ring fingers are all at different lengths, so they do adapt a little bit, but you see how they're mostly perpendicular? The thumb comes down at that 45 degree angle. Same concept as the three finger picking where we want that first knuckle to have some give and some bend to it as we go through. But this technique now gives all four strings equal representation. Now, this finger right here, I swear I'm not giving you the bird, the ring finger right here, it kind of sucks. It's really tough to get a good tone on the A string with that ring finger. It takes extra practice if you haven't worked on this before. That's one of the reasons why I think this technique isn't more popular is because people try it and it sounds soft and the A string is the most important string for melodies and things like that more often than not. So they give up on this technique. Stick with it though. And it can help to grow a little bit extra of nail on the ring finger. I do play with nails, they're not super long, but my ring finger usually is a little bit longer just to give a little bit more extra oomph on that one string. And so if I play that first line of the Bach piece again, go ahead and watch these fingers. See, I'm using the fingers kind of all evenly, right? This is a good example of when Campanella can be really good. 
But it's not the example that I want to use today. The example I want to use is the tune Carrick Fergus. And the reason is, is because with this, I'm going to want to do a lot of fills within my, my playing. I'm going to want to be able to play multiple strings at the same time, sequentially go through, and at times even play all four strings at the same time, which the four finger style really gives me. And that might sound something like this. notes ringing out together. Pretty nice, right? Moving the camera oh, back away. So that's an example of this four finger style being played and, and that campanella effect, which again, campanella, bell-like, it just means that the notes are trying to sustain into each other. And by assigning a different finger to each string, you get the maximum opportunity for those notes to be articulated individually and in any combination. And that's what makes it so cool, right? So that's our four finger picking technique that we're using. The three finger was our Travis picking, which has the thumb on the C and the G kind of alti alternating back and forth. And that's what gives us that sort of, right? This cool technique for uh, waltzing Matilda. We strip away another finger and now we got the two. That's where the Hawaiian pick strum comes in. Where it's kind of this hybrid between strumming and picking with the index coming on the ups, able to articulate single strings or combinations of strings, and the thumb being able to do that sort of down in between to create that really rich, beautiful sound. And then the single finger, just the thumb, is our melodic picking, which is best for any time you want to get that singular melodic line really beautifully through, like. where you can reinforce it with the different chords and different sounds. And so those are the four different techniques that I'm mentioning here today. Just as a disclaimer that I mentioned at the start, these are not the only four techniques there are on the ukulele. There are tons of different ones. In fact, there are tons of different single finger techniques, double finger techniques, triple, quadruple. There's all sorts of techniques. There's techniques from the world of the classical guitar. There's techniques from the world of flamenco. There's techniques from the world of more like folk guitar, from banjo, from mandolin. There's, there, we can take inspirations from so many different places. So don't hesitate to look towards those other places for inspirations. Most of the techniques that I play I learned by watching other ukulele players, and they learned it either by watching other ukulele players or watching players of other instruments and adapting the techniques for the ukulele. Jake Shimabukuro is a great example of this. He's gone on record many times talking about how this technique is based on a guitar technique that he saw, and this technique is based on something that he saw with Bella Fleck playing the banjo or whatever it might be. So it's pretty cool because these techniques on the ukulele, they're less proper than they are on other instruments because our instrument's so young and we're just kind of adapting things as we go. These techniques are proven to work, but Try and experiment, try different things and see what you like with it. You know, just because I mentioned the four finger style being the campanella, it doesn't mean you can't use three finger style and play campanella. In fact, it works great too. It, it, you, you can try Travis picking with four fingers. There's no, there's no single rule or regulation. These are just examples that I like to use and I like to use in my teaching. And so um, we're gonna look through the, the chat now for any questions. So if you're watching this live, feel free to leave a, a comment in chat. Um, if you're watching this as a recording, we do these the second Tuesday of every month at uh, noon Pacific time while my kid's at school. Um, and so uh, with that, we have a forum post that goes out every month that you can actually comment on over at Rock Class 101 and I'll answer any questions you have there. So if you can't make it live, your questions can always be answered. Um, but let me go ahead and take a look at those real quick and see what, what sort of cool questions people may or may not have. 
Um, the first one's from Gigi. Uh, this is a good topic. I feel as if the Hawaiian uke players have a unique right hand style from those who started with guitar, who seem to promote the classical guitar playing style for the right hand. I want to be like the ukulele greats, but feel pressure to conform to the classical guitar approach and the right hand technique. It's a great point. And it's, it's a little dicey of a thing to talk about too. And all that I mean by that is, you know, people can speak on authority, but it becomes what authority, right? Um, and so for, for me, I've been teaching the ukulele now for almost 15 years um, full time. And so I've had a lot of experience in these lessons. And one thing that I have uh, found in, in, in it is the ukulele is the ukulele. While you can adapt techniques, as I just mentioned, they oftentimes are not going to be exactly the same. So like classical guitar technique applied to the ukulele, there are some incredible benefits from doing that. I use a lot of techniques that have been applied from the classical guitar world, but they usually are not going to be a one for one application because the ukulele is a different instrument. So the way that you do these techniques, if you're learning these techniques from a guitarist and, and that guitarist is not adapting the techniques for the ukulele, right? They're just sort of taking the same technique and applying them. Just be wary because that means some of those techniques might not apply to the ukulele in the same way. There's a lot of rules in the classical guitar world that are told to be bad. They shouldn't do that on the ukulele side of things are actually correct and the right way to play it, at least in my experience uh, teaching all these years. Um, a good example of that could just be on a, a left hand fretting thing. You know, classical guitarists are taught to not put their thumb above this. This is fine on an ukulele. Both are fine. There are situations where you need that thumb up and above. I'm not saying every situation, uh, just like I'm also saying not every situation is down here too. I'll probably get a comment of somebody saying, no, your thumb should always be squared behind, in which case I'll have them, you know, I'd ask them to go watch Jake Shimabukuro play the song Let's Dance and tell me how you can do that with your thumb squared behind. Anyways, I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole right now. The point is we can take inspiration from other techniques and apply them to the ukulele. And at the end of the day, when you watch an ukulele player and they sound amazing and you wanna do that, try to emulate that. If they're doing something that creates proper tone, then they're using proper technique, right? We, we often have the mindset of proper technique creates proper tone, and that's true. But proper tone is also a product of proper technique. And what creates that properness is the outcome. Meaning if you can get great tone doing something a little bit different than how other people do it, that's correct. And you know, you can say it's not and that's fine, but it's just a fascinating thing to look at. So find what works for you, kind of tweak it for your journey and see how it goes. Um, just, you know, remember the ukulele is its own instrument. So if you're taught something that's, you know, this is the technique for classical guitar, just keep in mind, classical guitar is a inst different instrument. So um, the Bumble Bard said, uh, uh, it's good to try different techniques, but mainly focus on what you love to do. Uh, that's how I feel about it, totally agree. These are my guesses for what your four finger, pe four, four finger picking techniques are, Matt. Four finger picking techniques is a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, number one, tremolo. So good, good guess on that tremolo is this technique here. It's a thumb, uh, thumb finger style technique that involves vibrating the finger really quickly over the string. Kind of has some similarities to the melodic picking, but very different. Um, number two was piccato picking, which is uh, where you're playing melodies with multiple fingers, right? So it's something like... And that's kind of a classical guitar technique. Another good guess. Um, one technique that's half strumming, half finger picking. Nailed it. Right? Um, and then the drumpa loompa picking, bring the camera up. That's the technique where you summon your faculty of Drumpa Loompas to serenade you as their capuchin friends strum at wildly different rhythms. Uh, so I'm guessing Drumpa Loompa drew as an Andrew at rock class. I, I'm not familiar with the Drumpa Loompa picking, but I'll look, uh, I'll look into it. Um, then she says, looking forward to this lesson. Yeah, I hope, hope it's been a, a fun one. Um, let me see if there are other comments and questions here. Um, oh, great question from Ron. What makes the finger picking claw hammer style? Oh man, so I'm terrible. I, I wouldn't even say I'm terrible at claw hammer. I just cannot do it. It's one of those things where I think I gave it, uh, I tried it for a few minutes once. I was like, what's going on here? And so um, I'm going to explain just a very briefly what, what happens with claw hammer. But really what you should do is check out an accomplished claw hammer teacher. My favorite claw hammer teacher is Aaron Keim of Bean Sprout Ukuleles. An incredible builder, incredible player, incredible person. Um, but he has some fantastic resources on claw hammer. One of these days I just need to dive in and do it. But claw hammer, um, I, 
I mean, I believe it gets its name, and I, I could be totally wrong here. So if somebody in the chat wants to correct me, please do. This is something I do not have the experience with to be talking on. Uh, but what claw hammer is, I believe it's called claw hammer because your hand is kind of in the shape of a claw. I'm going to super zoom in. And I believe it's called claw hammer because what you're essentially doing is instead of picking by bringing your fingers up like this and striking the strings, you're actually bringing your fingers in. So you're kind of hammering it. And I believe that's what the technique really is. And I can't do it to save my life. And they use the thumb to kind of give this background stuff. It's, I believe the original claw hammer techniques taken from the five string banjo, which is very similar to a high G ukulele in that they have this high pitch string. I believe that's kind of what's happening. That was me butchering claw hammer beyond all belief, but gives you an idea of how it's a totally different technique. And that's what's so cool about this. There's so many different avenues to take as, as a ukulele player to take inspiration from other things, especially like claw hammer, for instance. So are there any other questions? Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything within the chat. Um, if you have a question, you're watching this live, now is your chance. Um, just to recap what we've worked on here, we had our four different techniques, right? Our first technique is our thumb picking, which I like to call melodic picking, which is my favorite to play melodies and reinforce it with chords. I use this with that chord melody style so much because it helps you find your voice. It's sort of like singing. You can find your individual sound with this technique. We had our two finger technique, which I'm calling the Hawaiian pick strum. It's kind of like a hybrid between strumming and picking using the index finger to kind of come up and strike single or multiple strings with the thumb playing on that G. It works best on a high G. You can do it on low G too. We had our three finger technique, which I call Travis picking because it's that style that's very reminiscent of the Merle Travis uh, style picking, which he's the creator of it, um, where you play a bass line with a thumb. In this case, we're alternating between our C and G strings while a melody is played with your E and A on your index and middle. And then our fourth technique was Campanella style. Campanella means little bell. In this case, it's sustaining notes into each other. So we try to equally represent all the strings. And that makes it so that we can allow all four strings to vibrate into each other by articulating them one at a time with the index, middle, or excuse me, thumb, index, middle, and ring on the G, C, E, and A strings, respectively. So. Well, these are four of my favorite techniques. There's lots more out there. Be sure to check them out. Try to find other things. If you have any questions and you're watching this as a recording, feel free to leave them in the chat below. Again, as I already mentioned before, we do these the second Tuesday of the month at noon Pacific time. So I hope to see you at the next one in May. Hope you all are having a wonderful start to the uh, second quarter of 2024. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.